everyone and welcome back along to my channel today. Uh, this morning I am going to be comparing some foam and pan with some Delta. Finally, finally got the Delta through. Um, it's not going to be a technical comparison, it's going to be more of a visual and shooting it with pinhole. So the plan is to shoot three scenes, one in foam and pan, exactly the same, turn it over and shoot it in Delta. So um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll crack on, we'll see how we get on today. Delta 100 and my Foma Pan 100 with me today. Um, normally I always use uh, Foma Pan and the reason for that is a box of this costs about 38 quid in the UK. A box of this costs about 42 pounds in the UK depending where you're buying it from. Uh, which doesn't sound too bad but with this you get 50 sheets and with that you get 25. So that's about, um, I think it's about £1.68 a shot and this is about 70 something pence a shot. So there's a huge, huge difference in cost. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if there's any visual difference or I know it's certainly better with the respicity failure. So I'll get much shorter exposure times. Uh, the other plan is to, uh, they both develop at the same time in Ilford's Ilford Soul 3 developer which is five minutes so the other plan is to be able to develop them together to see how that comes out it shouldn't be a problem I've not found anywhere online saying it's a problem um, but to be able to be able to use them two films together particularly in the low light to switch to the Delta would be quite a nice advantage um, so I'll find a few scenes today which have maybe got a bit of difference a bit darker so I can get much longer exposures and to see how they both perform in them. Uh, I was out the other week and there was a shot I really wanted but it was about a 13 minute exposure time with the foam pan. With the Delta it would have only been about two. The other issue you have with much longer exposures is throughout that time the light is also changing quite a lot. So your exposure times will end up changing while you're taking the exposure so you've always kind of got to be on top of it. So I'm hoping for good things with the Delta. I'm hoping it'll kind of be something I can always keep in my bag to uh, get them shots I want when the foam and pan just can't quite manage it. But that's the plan. Develop them, see how they are. So I've got my first shot set up, so the plan is this side of the film I've got Famer 100, this side of the film I've got Delta 100. And the first difference when shooting this is going to be the responsivity failure. This is basically when you've got a, a lower light. There's a lot of long winded videos on YouTube if you want to sit there for an hour and figure it all out. Basically the longer the exposure is you have to add more time to account for how the light interacts with the silver or something along them lines. Different films are very different. Foma pan is generally quite bad. 
So for this scene, I've got a metered exposure of, uh, I think it's about one, one and a half seconds. With Delta, I get about a one and a half second exposure. With Foma Pan, I get about a three and a half second exposure here. Um, I will try somewhere a lot lower light to see a bigger difference on that. But for this first scene, this is what we're going to shoot. So I've got three and a half seconds on Foma Pan, one and a half second exposure on Delta. So we'll shoot this and we'll see how they come out. So I've got my next shot set up. I'm here at this uh, All Saints Church in Eastbourne. I've got a two second metered exposure. So with the Foma Pan, I'll get about six and a half second, seconds. With the Delta, about two and a half seconds. So big difference here. So I've got the camera in a portrait. So I'm gonna get a nice wide shot straight up to the top of the tower there. And um, yeah, so here we go. out to the woods to uh, see if I can find my last shot for the morning uh, and we're going to be getting much longer exposure times out here so be an interesting comparison for much longer exposures and what that has an effect on the film um, they're just trying to find a good tree to photograph at the minute so I was saying about the cost of uh, Delta film and a foam pan film the Delta is about 160 in there which seems expensive compared to the foam pan I was uh, just looking at costs of colour colour negative 4x5 which is about £5.50 a sheet of film and um, slide film like a Fuji Velvia is about £7 to £8 a, uh, a sheet of film <laughs> 7 to £8 a shot so as much as I would love to shoot colour negative through my large format pen hole there's a um, no chance no chance not unless i'm going to start earning some mega money doing something or winning the lottery which i don't play so stick with black and white for now the delta doesn't sound too bad now but if you do want to help support my photography why not subscribe to my channel check out some of my other videos and my blog and stuff and that'd be much appreciated
So I've got my third and final shot set up for this tree. I'm going with the wide angle to try and hopefully get this root going along and then it should get up quite, quite a way on the tree. I've got a metered exposure of about a tenth of a second. Going that over to my f-stop of uh, 130, it goes up to about 26 seconds. Add in the respicity failure, uh, which you can just use an app for if you can't be bothered. That gives me an exposure time on the delta for 50 seconds and the FOMA pan, five minutes. So I'm going to get the FOMA pan out of the way first. So that's five minutes and then the delta is just 50 seconds. So that's the biggest difference you'll find between the FOMA and the delta. But how they look at the end is what it all comes down to. So a shot like this, especially with a, a long exposure, I took a uh, light meter reading for when the sun was out and then another one for when it had um, clouded over a little bit and kind of found that tenth of a sec second um, in the middle. Uh, the problem with a long exposure is the light's going to change throughout it. So if it stays too bright for too long, you're then going to overexpose your shot shot. If, it, if the cloud just covers and then you've got to add, a, try and figure out how much more time you've got to add so it's not underexposed. So whereas with the uh, delta, I'm just going to be getting a 50 second exposure. Throughout that time, it shouldn't change much. It, if anything, a few seconds here and there, which won't make much difference. So it's going to be interesting to see how well both of these come out in comparison. I'm quite looking forward to it. But certainly if you're in a rush, I think I'll stick with the Ilford. But it's always quite nice to not know, especially with pinhole photography. You don't know what you're doing half the time. You're kind of guessing a lot of um, the compositions and stuff. So a lot of stuff's moving around throughout the exposure. So it might make for a more interesting shot. So yeah, we'll see about that. sun has just vanished so I'm just going to wait for that to pop back out just so we've still got that nice light on the side of the tree and that's what I've exposed for so hopefully that won't be too long So throughout that last exposure, um, the light didn't really come back out and I did re-meter and it, um, it should have been about another two minute exposure for the um, delta uh, because it went down to about a third of a second or something. So I've reopened the shutter for another 40 seconds. I don't know if this will actually work. I'm going by the theory it will. I've had a minute exposure. It needs about two minutes. Uh, the light did pop out for a bit so it's going to be a bit hit and miss so i've opened up for another uh, 40 se 45 seconds i think to try and add to it it's another experiment i'm not sure if it'll work but it should work in theory it should work so it's kind of like a double exposure but the same shot but don't know unless you try So that's the photos done, uh, six photos, three different shots. Obviously I could have three, three photos that look exactly the same as the other, but 
it's going to be an interesting uh, comparison definitely and developing them together um, that last shot I'm actually going to be quite interested in as it was definitely going to be underexposed if I'd left it but by adding to it after the shot it'll be interesting to see how that comes out so I'm going to head back get them developed get them scanned and we'll um, compare them side by side So all the um, film has now been developed and scanned. I've got all on my computer now. Uh, I developed it all in Ilford's Ilford Soul 3 developer. Both the films develop at five minutes in this. I had it all in the same tank together. Uh, so this was my first shot of East Bomb Pier. This one is in uh, Famapan. This was a three and a half second exposure. And then I switched over to the Ilford Delta, which is this shot. And then uh, back to the Foma Pan. So switching between the two, there's obviously um, a little bit of difference. The um, more contrasty on the Delta, it's certainly, I'd say, a nicer looking shot. I prefer the darks to lights on that. The foam pan just looks a little bit flat. You could probably adjust that in editing if needed, but both of these, I've only given them a slight tweak. I scanned them all so they were quite a neutral. Uh, I didn't allow any of the automatic settings to adjust anything. And then I've just brought some of the blacks back and stuff. But the delta certainly looks a lot nicer on this uh, if we zoom in on it uh, remember this is on a pinhole camera so it's never going to be amazing but that's in foma pan uh, not the, and that's in delta delta looks sharper on this one but i partly would wonder if because uh, the foma pan was a longer exposure that's foma pan that's Delta. Because the uh, foam pan was a longer exposure, the tripod was ever so slightly sinking in the sand as I was um, taking the shot, so it would obviously be a little bit more blurry. But the overall image on that, I'd say I definitely prefer the Delta. But I don't mind the um, foam pan. Like I said, you could tweak it around a little bit if need be, and you could probably match the uh, Delta quite easily. So the second shot, we went over to the uh, church. That's this one here. This is in Famer Pan. That was the first one we took. Um, I'm kind of pleased with it and not so pleased with it. Obviously, the distortion in the building, I didn't really think about. That was because the camera was angled and pointing more up, which is obviously bent everything. I do want to go back and actually retake that shot. Um, obviously with the camera flat, so it's everything's uh, correct. But I think I'll also wait until later in the afternoon when the sun, sun is further around, so it actually uh, gets a bit of detail more down in here. But anyway, on these shots today, or I was taking these, uh, that's the Foma Pan, and that is the Delta. So it's not actually a lot of difference at all on these. The only real difference is um, that is the foma pan. Down here, the delta does lose um, a bit of that shadow detail. But I think that is down to when I was uh, removing the film holder, I did knock the camera up a little bit. So it's changed its position ever so slightly, which has then just cut that out a little bit. But that's back on the Foma pan. If we uh, zoom in on this, let's go to about here in the center. So that's Foma pan, and then we switch to the Delta. So both are actually really quite sharp. When you consider again that this is just a, a pinhole camera, no lenses whatsoever. Uh, there's quite a lot of detail on that and they're probably both about the same that's foma pan back to the delta so switching between the two it's a little bit more grainy the foma pan you can see up around here that's probably just from the scan 
but the delta certainly looks a lot nicer on this one. Uh, but side by side, they're both pretty much about the same. So I'm pleased with them. They both look pretty good. Uh, then we go off into the woods. And this shot is the Foma pan. So this was a five minute exposure on this one. And it's, um, it looks pretty nice actually. This old blurring going on in the middle here is from the um, ferns that were uh, flapping away in the wind. There's a few more over here. But I quite like that. It's a nice shot. I like the root leading you up to the tree. Uh, so if we switch to the delta. So that was the shot I did uh, as a one minute exposure to start with and then open the shutter again for about another 45 seconds just to try and help rebalance it back out because the light had dropped which obviously looks like it worked thankfully but there seems to be obviously the light was changing a lot but on the delta which is this one there's a lot more uh, visible in the background here compared to the foam pan which looks a lot darker but that could purely be just down to the light which was coming in through the trees at the time that's the delta again. See, out of these, I'm not actually too sure which I prefer. They both look quite nice. They both got their only very slight differences, but I do like the fact the delta does have that bit more in the back. It just does seem a little bit more clearer. Let's just zoom in on this. Uh, we're coming down here actually. Let's come out a little bit. So that is Femapan, that's uh, Delta. So they're about the same. Femapan, maybe it's much sharp on the edge there. Yeah, come out. So that's in on the Femapan, and that's the Delta again. Like I say, a lot of this could just be down to the light of the time, but both shots are actually quite good. I don't know which one I'd pick between the two. Uh, they both seem to have worked well. Obviously the advantage with this is the Delta was only a, a equivalent at the time of the five minute foam pan would have only been about a minute. So it's a much shorter exposure time because of the viscosity failure. But overall I'm pleased with them all. Um, would I say the extra pounder shot and a bit for the delta is worth it probably not no definitely not no actually i would think i'll definitely keep it in my bag because there's certain times when the foam pan the exposures is just way too long and delta is just a lot more short shorter more manageable and if if i was inside say the church taking shots the exposure times on the foam and pan would just be absolutely awful whereas the delta you could go in you could get a few short exposures and get the shots you wanted so the delta i'm definitely going to keep in my bag i'll keep a few film holders loaded with it but i'll stick to the foam and pan as my main film obviously down to cost but yeah i'm really pleased with them i'm glad i've done it it's nice to see them all side by side and to see what the difference is Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a bit long-winded, but if you can please uh, subscribe, it'd be much appreciated. I'll put a link down below so you can see all the um, photos on my blog. I'll put them together so you can switch and change between them yourself. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time I'm out.